I put out like an all call on Facebook talking about masculinity and disability. And then I was going to be doing these interviews and what kind of sparked your interest in being a part of these interviews? I think we don't, uh, it's cliche to say, but we don't talk about masculinity enough. And I think the definition of masculinity, in my opinion, is actually wrong. So I wanted to be able to change the narrative a bit. Awesome. Well, we'll see what we do in our conversation together today. Um, so first, are you a dude that has a disability? I am a dude that has a disability. So ballsy to be exact. Um, and before I go on, I don't want to blame anyone that has um, different opinions than I do. Just This is just my opinion. And if it helps you, uh, great. If it doesn't, great as well. I'm not, not trying to sway people, just trying to be informative. And so what does it mean to be a man from your perspective? Well, first of all, we are all humans. So we, if you, are, we are all born humans. And if we take a look at what a human is, it, you separate it and it's man. A woman is a man, a uh, um, a person. Uh, no, a uh, human woman. Uh, man is obviously a man. Um, and I don't mean figuratively man. Um, so I don't mean uh literary man at at some at its uh core. Um, like. People just say man as as just too to a man, you know? Like that's a that's a phrase that people use. So I don't think it's used in my opinion properly. And I think what it means in, in society is is to be strong to to not show emotions but actually i think that's the opposite of of being a man so if being strong and uh not showing emotions is what it seems society is labeling as to be a man what is your definition how do you define that differently yeah my definition is is showing emotion i think being a man a lot of people use it as something that means be an example and being an example means show toughness but when we're all said and done in this world, we want to make an impact, and, and we don't want people to not, at least I don't want people to not show their authentic self because they're supposedly trying to be quote unquote a man and tough. So I think it's a lot stronger to show those emotions. It, it's tough to do so. I am I'm twenty recently turned twenty seven years old and and for twenty six years or close to it, my definition of a man was to not show vulnerability, but I realized that vulnerability isn't a strong suit of mine and, and that's what makes me attractive in, in some sense. So I think that's what makes me a man and what do you think is the hardest part about being a man with a disability 
that's a great question. I think being a man with a disability, physically, we don't walk. Physically, I don't walk as well as other people. My hand is fisted. I don't. It doesn't look normal. So I don't look normal, and even if I try to to build muscle strongly, which and get a, a six pack, there's no uh way that my disability is going to disappear. Now I understand that people want six packs it six pack, and I know I know that you have had six a uh, six pack before and you probably still have one. And the reason why you're doing it, I, I don't blame you for doing it probably uh this way because you want to feel good for yourself. I feel too many people want to show up physically so another person can find them attractive. But that's not the way to be found attractive. And it's it needs to be thought about differently, in my opinion. So, Jake, what makes you attractive? I think it's my ability to be vulnerable and say what I want to say and think about how I say it to make sure that people are not getting offended. And by saying what I I say, it makes me authentic. People can love someone first blush and want to take them home and want to be want to be girlfriend and boyfriend but after that phase of romantic romanticizing over each other goes away then you find a true person in that body and when that true person is not who you are valuing or value yourself then it's not worth it i mean it was worth it for a couple minutes, but when you think about it, it's not worth it. So when I when I come into a relationship, friendship or or romantic relationship, you're gonna get me the exact same way the first day to the last day you, you meet me. Sure, I'll have days that are off, but I'm I'm gonna be who I am authentically and try to be who I am authentically most of the all of the days actually. And if I'm not myself that day, I could say, hey man, I'm not in a position to help you right now. And what I'm gonna say is probably something that I'll regret. And I don't want you to listen to my advice right now. So I, I'd be happy to help you find someone who can give you good advice at the moment, but I can't. So that takes me, gets me out of the position of helping someone when I don't think I'm the right person in that moment. And that takes that person out of the position of saying something that they are going to think I said and take it as gospel and then say, hey, that didn't work, not only for me, but for the for that person as well. So I think it's good to just be able to evaluate yourself and say, hey, today's not my day, but I'm always going to show up authentically and saying today's not my day is authentic. Might be the most authentic thing it could do. Yeah, I I love that. Um, 
you kind of spoke into this a little bit earlier, but um, what's one message you think society is getting wrong about masculinity and disability? Yeah, masculinity and, and disability, and I think as a whole, we look at physical appearance too much. And I'll be the first one to say, hey, I have a disability and I feel like people are not looking at my physical appearance because they find me inspirational and I want to be looked at as physically attractive. But also, I want to be looked at for the things that I bring to the table that are not physically physical, physically apparent about me. And that is my emotional intelligence. And I don't want to botch what this guy said, but I'm very, very interested in broadcasting. And this guy, Jason Bonetti, who has cerebral palsy, he can he says it's okay for you to think about me as inspirational as long as you use it to get up the next day and help yourself, not because you feel bad for me. So I'm fine with people finding me inspirational, but for the right reasons. And if that's not the right reason, then I'll find someone else to be my friend. But going back to masculinity and, and physical, I think with a disability, the two could go hand in hand. You just told me I, I looked like a model before. You haven't seen, you just saw the, the top of me. You haven't seen me walk or anything like that. Or quite frankly, I'm wearing pajamas underneath here, so I'm not exactly a model. But hopefully, after you see me walk, you'll, you'll see my quaffed hair and, and think that it's attractive. And I think that's, um, that's something that is attractive to me looking past my disability. And you said it was quaffed. I, I didn't say it was. <laughs> I think it looks bad today. Yeah, man, that's all good. Um, so that's kind of one thing you think society is getting wrong. What's one thing you think you might be getting wrong when it comes to disability and masculinity? Yeah. I think I look at for I'm speaking for myself now. For me, I understand that I can't change myself. But that doesn't mean I don't think about changing myself every day and what I could do and how I could be, quote unquote, better and look normal. I think society is what is encouraging me to want to look, quote unquote, normal. And ultimately, I might not look normal, but I I give values to society that are more important than the way I walk. And we all we all do give values to society that are more important than what we think we stand for or what we look like. It's something that I think society as a whole has caused us to think about. And when looking at it, it's in front of our face every day. We look at Instagram, Facebook, we look at the beautiful pictures, but you don't think about that person who's holding their stomach in because they don't want to look fat because of, of all their bloat that they have. But that doesn't make that person a good person or not. So we have to, or I have to change my 
narrative in terms of thinking, oh, because that person looks hot and she looks she looks skinny and she has nice uh she has nice hair. Um that doesn't mean that person is for me. Sure, do I want to date someone that I don't feel like matches my physical attractiveness that I I have when I'm thinking about dating someone? No, but is that something that I will look past because of because that is the center? Or is that something that that I will focus on and look past everything else, even if that person is rude, because she is nice to look at every single day. And that is not is not the case either. It's it's finding the the happy medium and that's why oftentimes people's perfect person doesn't look exactly like they envision it to be. Because even if they have the physical attractiveness, there's one thing about them that is something that you dislike. Uh, I want to not encourage, but I want to encourage myself that even though I dislike something about this person, doesn't mean I dislike this person. I might dislike the way they they are talking about someone, but when they talk to me and and help me out, are they genuinely helping me out, or or do they have my best interest? And yes, that is something that comes across when they talk to other people. So. That is not a great example, but if I don't like the way that a person thinks of my baseball team, is that is that the end of the world? No, it's it's something that I I disagree with. But are they are they still a friend of mine and 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 someone I can can find him? Yes. All right, man. That um I wanna know what's one thing that you love about your disability? I think we all find ourselves thinking about why us at some point or another and and I can't tell you exactly why it's physical for me. Maybe because a higher power wants to me to say that I'm going on a straight path beside despite how my walk looks, which is exactly the opposite, not straight. But we can't We'll never know that. So, and uh, and despite that, if I didn't know it, are there times that I still would not like to have it? Sure, yeah. Um, a million times and probably multiple times a day. But going back to what you said about what I like about my disability and talking about what I dislike right now, if I put that all in perspective and said, hey, I dislike this about me, but when I look at it and speaking of perspective, I love my perspective on life because of my disability. And that's what is, I believe, the strongest attribute that has come with my difference. And I, I can't tell you that that has, would have been there if 
it wasn't for my difference. I I think it's no coincidence that I get along with minorities better because they understand me better. And as I said, it doesn't have to be a physical disability. Mine just so happens to be. But you can be of a different color and experience racism or different religion and experience tough times because of that. And then it makes us all the same. We look different on the outside, but when we look in our hearts, we're all the same and we're all starving for connection. What do you think, as a man, is the most challenging thing to talk about, and what would make it easier? The most challenging thing to talk about, that's a really good question. I have a story, if that's okay. Um, so I've looked at, I'm a journalist, or I'm trying to become a journalist. I, um, graduated with a sports journalism degree, and, uh, and that's what I'm, I'm doing. I think the reason why I got into journalism is because I love to ask questions, and I don't, I don't feel like, I feel like that escapes me from talking about my physical disability and myself. That is the most difficult part about having a a disability and being a man because you so desperately want to talk about yourself and maybe sometimes you want pity, and sometimes you don't. You just want to talk about yourself. You want understanding. And society hasn't allowed us to accept that we could talk about our feelings all the time. So for me, who, who visibly has a reason to want to talk about his feelings. Society has taught me that that is not showing a strength of mine. But at the same time, I am not bound to society's standards. I can find a group of people that allow me to vocalize my needs and wants, such as the group that we had in Clubhouse and what you're doing right now and and the group in which I joined, which allows us to write about our feelings. So I'm not stuck in what society is telling me to do. I will say multiple times a day, I think about society and what, and going back to the way I was because it's hard to be vulnerable. So that's the, that's the struggle there. The most struggling thing is, is what I want the most is to be vulnerable and to be a man and and disabled and, and to live in this society. It's, something that doesn't want to be talked about, unfortunately. And thank you for creating a space in which we can talk about it freely, expressing ourselves in this manner. I love that, man. I think that definitely is a courageous share right there. And it makes me think of if you were joining a community 
with other men and these men are also men with disabilities what would you be looking for uh within that community i would just be looking for an open space to join to join in and have my voice feel heard um I haven't been in one, and I don't have this problem of being an alcoholic. But for what I've heard, and it doesn't run in my family, thankfully, but from what I heard, these meetings in AA are so powerful because people share their stories, regardless if you're male or female. Because if you don't share your stories, you may not be at the next meeting because you may want to take your life. And I think even though it doesn't get to that point for all of us, if it builds up, it paralyzes us from feeling and doing what we want to do on a daily basis. And at the end of the day, when we sit on that, that deathbed, are we saying to ourselves that we did what we wanted to do? And yes, what we want to do doesn't directly, what we're saying doesn't directly impact what we're going to do, but hopes, but maybe it does. It propels us to do the thing that we want to do because you don't feel alone and you feel that you're part of a group that can can um, can associate with you. The best way I can put it is two people are scared of heights and they want to go skydiving, but they're not going skydiving because they're scared, too scared. And then they talk about it and say, hey, we're both scared. Maybe we can join together and do this together. It's important to realize when you're feeling isolated and feeling like you can't do something going back to disability because of your disability, is it something that you are telling yourself you can't do because you don't want to do it and you feel lazy at that time? Or is it something that you're telling yourself you can't do because you actually can't do it? And it's fine for, uh, it's fine being lazy sometimes. And that is, is the, human nature for example i went in and i got a glass of orange juice the other day and asked my mom to pour me the orange juice could i do it yes um but did i want to do it at the time no the main the main thing is when um when she's pouring that orange juice i am envisioning that one day i won't I will have my own place and I won't be able to ask someone for the to pour the orange juice. So as long as I'm okay with accepting that right now, then someone uh, then I can have someone pour the orange juice for me. It's something that you look inside yourself and say, hey, am I am I doing this for the right reasons? And if I'm not, am I abusing it? If I, like, as I said, if I ask my mom to do it once, that's fine. If I ask my mom to do it twice, that's fine. If I ask my mom to do it five times or more, that's not so fine. But we need to evaluate that and say, hey, yeah, what am I doing this for? And sometimes we'll, we'll get, won't get, I don't want to say crucified, but sometimes I'll get very upset because 
people don't understand that I need help sometimes. And then you'll say, and people will say, well, why can't you do this? And I'll say, oh, because I have a, a, a physical disability. And um, and they say, like, well, you need to kind of suck it up and, and do it. And that could paralyze you and make you think you need to suck it up and do it. But then what you should do, and I'm starting to do, took me 26 years to do it. So like, is that a pattern there that I'm seeing? Are people constantly telling me to suck up and do it? No. So is there someone in my contacts that I could go and say, hey, this is what someone said, but I know you understand this difficulty more. So can you come and help me with this? Because you understand it more. That, for example, that I just did that yesterday with finding a job. I know it's difficult to find a job. Most people, especially in most companies, especially in the journalism field, want you to do something the same day and get it in. And I thought about it and said, yeah, that's true. But there's other people that can help me figure that out instead of just telling me, well, you need to do something about it. So I wrote that email and said, hey, I struggle. I'm struggling with this. Can you help me do it? And I don't, I wouldn't have been able to do that even maybe a week ago without the help of my psychiatrist, psychologist, and people around me that, that believe in me. And when you have that support, you have to go for it because you know if you don't try, you're never gonna win. The way I try, and and I don't try everything that I'm gonna say that I'm gonna try, and hopefully one day, if it's safe, I will try everything. If it's not safe, then don't try it. And someone will tell you it's not safe. Um, but I think about it as, this person is devoting their time to help me do something. So am I going to sit there and, and ask them for advice about it? Maybe so. I've done that for 26 years. You, of course you want advice. But after you get that advice, you have to do something about it. And then go back and say, hey, I did this. This is how I feel about it. And that might take 26 years like me, and it might take one week, but it's something that I use to keep myself accountable. And I hope it comes across as something that I've struggled with and I'm not making it look easy because it's, it's not. But... That's the point where that you want to get to and say, hey, I did this. I'm struggling with it. Can you help me? Like that example I gave of my teacher. And you have to look hard, but I guarantee that one day and one place in time there was someone who looked past your disability. And if you don't have them in your contacts, find a way to to get them. And if you think it's too late because you haven't reached out to them in years, if they really care about you, they're going to answer that phone and, and get back to you. And it takes a lot of courage, speaking of vulnerability, like I said before, to reach out to 
someone and say, I need help. That to me is being masculine. Saying I need help is masculine. I love that. Um, so I got two more questions for you, Jake. Number one, I want you to complete this sentence for me, okay? So the sentence is, I'm just a dude who wants. I'm just a dude who wants understanding. But the more and more I think about it, I'm not going to get it all the time. So I need to get it for myself. I need to know that when I put my heart and soul into something, that's me doing it for me, not for a reason to get feedback for encouragement. And I find myself doing things just to say, hey, hey, Jake, you're good. It's, and I, I want that person to say, hey, Jake, you are on that, you are on that white path. Then I get emotional to talk about it because that's not always going to come. But I don't need that person to, that specific person to say, you're on the right path. One person could say it, and they could be completely opposite from that other person. They, they could be a, they could be a psychologist, and not have anything to do with journalism, but say you're on the right path, and I'll be confident to do it. And if I can't find that person right away. There are materials for me, luckily, that I could go into and read something that I've been I've been given to or given to for awards that I've won or something like that. And it's not the award that I cherish, it's the letter that I cherish that came with that award because it shows how much people care about me. And maybe you are at a time where you're unclear and and you can't think of one person that cares about you. At the time that you are clear, say, hey, I know you really care about me, and I know right now I'm doing well, but I know in the, I know inevitably that one day I'll be doing poorly, and maybe I, I wouldn't think of calling you because I'm so in my head. So wouldn't you, much to what you say about voice notes, and they're powerful. Would you record a voice note telling me that I'm okay in this situation? Or would you record a, a text, uh, send a text message? And I've been thinking of doing this for a long time. Don't really, <laughs> haven't done it because I don't think it's masculine enough. But, but one day, but it's, it's a true, definition of masculinity. One day, I'm gonna go on my Facebook account or, or, or text my friends saying, hey, I'm doing extremely well right now, but I know inevitably I'm gonna have a hard time and during that and how much time I might not be able to think about 
who I need to call or what I need to do. So would you mind exchanging some encouraging words for me? And I'll do it exchanging. So I'll do it for you. And hopefully that person knows that you're sincere and they'll agree to it. If it's not a sincere relationship, then that's something that you have to work out because someone doesn't agree to just leave you a word of encouragement. Uh, it doesn't have to be this whole thing about like, hey, you saved my life or something like that. It just could be, hey man, your friendship means a lot to me. And and I think that's the definition of masculinity or example of masculinity, being able to know what is good for yourself and be concentrate on yourself and know that this is the way that I keep my cup full so I can help other people. It's not selfish because if my cup wasn't full, I wouldn't be able to help other people. So take the moment to say, hey, I'm I'm going to focus on my self-care. It's not selfish, but, but I'm going to focus on my self-care because if I want to help people, I know my cup needs to be full. I want to ask you this, and I just want to know yes, no for this particular one, and then I'll go on to the final question. But as you were talking about this voice note and going on your social media and asking your friends in that one day when you feel like you're ready to do that, were there individuals that you are specifically thinking about as you talked about that? Yeah. Yes, I do. All right. The last question I got for you, Jake, is this one. What do you want to be remembered for? That's a another great question. I want to be remembered for... I want to be remembered as someone who made an impact, but I don't want to be remembered as someone who made an impact just because I helped someone. I want to be remembered as someone who made an impact because I did not let the barriers of my life affect what I wanted to do in my life. So when someone said how Jake made an impact in my life, it's not going to be a specific moment, but it'll be a mantra for them to say, hey, I'm not going to let anything that's in my way prevent me from living my best life. All right, Jake, man, I appreciate you for taking the time to share your story with us today. Um, and I definitely uh, see your vulnerability and I will hold um, this vision with you of, of who it is you want to um, become in the world. And I, I know that that voice note thing that's coming faster than <laughs> you might think about it um that you're gonna get on there and you're gonna say hey i need some help on these bad days who wants to exchange these notes with me um so i appreciate you man and thanks for your time no problem man i say this voice note thing because people go on on Facebook or anything like that and get 
get uh, comments on one moment, but it's more than one moment that you've that you define your life in. It's several moments, and voice notes or text message is can engulf those moments together just by saying thank you for being you.